If we could turn back time to the 1990s, would it have been possible for the J-83 fighter jet, a vessel carrying the dreams of countless aviation professionals, to break free from its technological constraints and truly soar across the skies of our motherland? Looking back at the long history of China's aviation equipment development, the J-8 series fighter jets undoubtedly represent a significant chapter. Among them, the J-83 model stands out as an abrupt pause, embodying the ambitious drive of China's aviation industry to catch up during that specific historical period, yet also exposing profound limitations in industrial foundations, technological reserves, and system integration capabilities. By 2026, as the final batch of aging fighters like the J-7 and J-8 retired from frontline service, an era officially drew to a close. This makes it all the more necessary to examine that journey marked by both relentless struggle and profound regret, particularly the J-83 project. Its premature demise was not accidental, but an inevitable outcome of multiple intertwined factors, with the engine's severe underperformance being merely the tip of the iceberg. Let us rewind to the early 1990s. At that time, the J-83 project, a deep modification of the J-8I platform, was formally launched with a clear objective to develop a domestically produced high-altitude, high-speed interceptor with robust beyond-visual-range air combat capabilities and comprehensive performance to address the still severe pressures on national air defense. Although China introduced its first batch of Su-27SK fighters in 1992, opening the door to advanced third-generation aircraft, the mere dozens of units were a drop in the bucket for the vast airspace and independent production capabilities had yet to be established. Therefore, fundamentally upgrading the J-8 series to enable it to launch medium-range intercept missiles and establish reliable air superiority became a critical direction for the Air Force's equipment development at that time. The J-83 was tasked with this historic mission. It was planned to be equipped with two domestically produced WP-14 turbofan engines fitted with the domestically developed Type 1471 Doppler radar and integrated with PL-11 semi-active radar-guided medium-range missiles and PL-8 close-range air-to-air missiles. On paper, this represented an ambitious leap forward. However, the gap between ideal and reality soon became apparent. The primary culprit was the WP-14 engine, the very hard intended to embody China's aspirations. Developing this engine was an extraordinarily challenging endeavor, aiming to deliver greater thrust and improved reliability than its predecessor, the WP-13. Yet, during actual development and testing, the WP-14 exhibited a series of severe issues, including but not limited to low reliability, high failure rates, and maintenance difficulties. It even caused a serious accident during test flights. As the heart of a fighter jet, an unreliable engine, one prone to sudden failure, undermines the aircraft's overall performance and safety. Consequently, the J-83 project faced severe delays, flight testing became highly risky, and military confidence in the future equipment plummeted. The engine technology bottleneck became the most lethal noose around the J-83's neck. Simultaneously, integrating the entire weapons fire control system proved far more challenging than anticipated. The development of the PL-11 medium-range air-to-air missile, intended for the J-83, also suffered severe delays. Interfacing and debugging the missile with the onboard radar and fire control computer constituted a complex systems engineering task requiring extensive flight testing for validation and refinement. At that time, China possessed very limited experience in digital avionics and system integration. The 1471 radar itself, as an early domestically produced pulse Doppler radar, raise significant questions regarding its stability and reliability. Could it effectively guide missiles in complex electronic environments? With the engine facing production delays, missiles arriving late, and the radar still requiring validation, the J-83 project found itself in a predicament akin to a skilled cook without ingredients, or more accurately, with incomplete ingredients and insufficient heat. The passage of time has also transformed the battlefield environment and competitive landscape. During the mid to late 1990s, when the J-83 was undergoing arduous development, international aviation technology advanced at a rapid pace. Third-generation fighters represented by the F-15, F-16, and Su-27 had matured and proliferated extensively. Across the strait, Air Forces had gained a generational edge in quality by introducing F-16A, B, Mirage 2005, and domestically produced IDF fighters. Even if the J-83 ultimately succeeded, its fundamental aerodynamic layout, rooted in 1960s designs, revealed inherent limitations when facing true third-generation fighters. 
The Air Force urgently requires equipment capable of matching or surpassing adversaries in performance, not an enhanced second and a half generation platform that may have held catch up potential at project inception, but now shows signs of strain mid development. Amid these internal and external pressures, decision makers opted for a pragmatic approach. On one hand, they accelerated cooperation with Russia to expedite the introduction and assimilation of Su-27 production technology, the fastest route to acquiring heavy air superiority capabilities. On the other hand, they pursued a dual-track approach domestically, launching the J-8H project based on existing mature technologies. The J-8H abandoned the high-risk WP-14 engine in favor of the more reliable WP-13B, while making prudent upgrades to avionics and weapons compatibility to enable the use of the relatively mature PL-11 missile. With its short development cycle and manageable risks, the J-8H was rapidly finalized, put into production, and deployed to units. During the critical transition period at the dawn of the 21st century, it tangibly enhanced frontline air combat capabilities though it still couldn't fully bridge the generational gap. So, was it feasible to resolve the J-83's engine issues at the time? From a purely technical perspective, it would have required an investment of time, funds, and manpower far exceeding initial estimates, a lengthy process of troubleshooting and remedial work that would have been tantamount to developing an entirely new engine. Given the constraints of national resources and the urgent need for Air Force equipment modernization, the cost-effectiveness of such an investment, regardless of time frame, was self-evident. A deeper issue lies in aviation manufacturing being an industry that places extreme emphasis on systems engineering and foundational scientific accumulation. The setbacks with the WP-14 engine expose shortcomings in China's fundamental capabilities, including material science, precision machining, thermodynamic calculations, and testing verification systems. These gaps cannot be instantly bridged through isolated breakthroughs, they demand sustained investment and comprehensive industrial system upgrades. Thus, the true solution to engine lag lies not in merely fixing the WP-14, but in persevering through hardship to fortify the entire aeropropulsion industry's foundation. It was only through the arduous journey of developing the Taihong series turbofan engines that we finally began to overcome this hurdle. The J-83's quiet departure was regrettable, yet far from futile. Its development accumulated invaluable experience and lessons learned for subsequent improved variants, like the J-8F-H. The J-8F eventually integrated the 1,492 radar in the PL-12 active medium-range air-to-air missile, partially achieving the medium-range air combat capability the J-83 had sought. Yet by 2005, China's indigenous third-generation fighters, the J-10 and J-11 series, had already begun taking center stage. The J-83 story teaches us that weapons development must respect scientific principles and technological leaps cannot occur without robust industrial foundations. Its failure serves as a mirror, reflecting the ambitions, anxieties, and limitations of China's aviation industry during that specific era. Today, as we witness the J-20 Dragonfly soaring through the skies and see a succession of advanced aviation systems emerge, Reflecting on the J-83's legacy helps us appreciate how arduous the journey was from lagging far behind to achieving parity. Bidding farewell to the J-8 era also marks the end of an era where air power relied primarily on reverse engineering and modifications. It is precisely through these explorations, woven with both successes and failures, that the Chinese Air Force and aviation industry have steadily advanced toward a more independent, confident, and powerful future. And that J-83, which never truly entered service, will forever remain a unique cornerstone etched in the annals of China's aviation self-reliance.